that you are standing here today. There is nobody like him. There is nobody that does the things that he does. Nobody can do the things that he does. Nobody can make us feel the way he makes us feel.
to heaven this morning. Just lift up your hand. Lifting up holy hands. It's a sign of surrender. It's a sign of telling the Lord that I give it all unto you. Just lift up your hand. A moment of silence in the house. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. As your hands are being lifted up this morning, I pray for you that every gate that has been mounted against your destiny, as far as your hands could lift, they are lifted away in Jesus' name. Because you are in this sanctuary this morning. Whatever you have been struggling with because of this service, I declare that they are destroyed in Jesus' name. Because your hands are lifted up to heaven, I pray for you that the anointing to be above and never below receive it in Jesus' name. Because your hands are lifted up this morning. And the Bible says that the Lord will bless the works of your hand. I proclaim from this altar that whatever you lift that hand upon will prosper in Jesus' name. I want to speak about the mantle this morning. And I want you to know that the mantle will only remain a mantle until you pick it up. And that is the reason why your hand is so important to your destiny. Therefore, I prophesy again as from this altar that the anointing to pick up your mantle receive it in Jesus' name. The Bible said that the mantle fell from Elijah. If the mantle had fallen from Elijah and Elijah refused to pick the mantle, the mantle would have carried the most potent power on the surface of the earth, but there would have been no man to exercise the power. Masakalaba shindebolimbragada. The power, the tenacity, the boldness to carry your mantle, receive it in Jesus' name. Hey, you have waited for too long. The power, the anointing has been waiting for you. But because the Lord, our God, is the God of second chance, I speak to your destiny this morning. 
And I declare that you shall not be late anymore in Jesus' name. The Bible says that Elisha picked the mantle and there was a turn around in his life. The ministry of Elisha started from the book of 2 Kings. In the book of 1 Kings, Elisha was a houseboy unto the big prophet. Elisha was a nobody. Elisha was pouring water to the feet of Elijah. But in the book of 2 Kings, he got the mantle. And the mantle signifies empowerment. The mantle signifies establishment. Therefore, I pray for you this morning that the mantle that is required for you to march to the place of authority, receive it in Jesus' name. I want you to know that we all need the mantle. The mantle promotes. The mantle authorizes. The mantle establishes. And I want you to know that it's not everyone that gets the mantle. The Bible says everyone runs the road, but only one wins the prize. I pray for you this morning that the anointing to be above and not be able to receive it in Jesus' name. Because you have come into this service this morning. I pray for you that your waiting time is over in Jesus' name. Church, I want you to know this morning that who you become in life does not stop in the place of your calling. That's the reason why the Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 22, after the parable, Jesus said that many are called, but few are chosen. For the fact that you are called does not mean that you are chosen. The place where you are being chosen is the place of the appointment. Now after the appointment, you will be tried and you will be proved to show that you are capable enough to handle the mantle. I pray for you because the man to open doors, the man to delivers, the man to establishes, the man to enable. Therefore, I declare your hand has been idle for some time, but I deliver the power above all power into that hand in Jesus' name. spend some time speaking the word of God into your life this morning. Please don't mind me that you're going to stand for a little period. The Bible said that Elisha picked the mantle. And the first test of Elisha's authority was Jordan. The Bible said that he had seen his father Moments ago, parting the same Jordan into two with the same man too. Hey! Power! He had learned from his father. And he has seen the power of God through his father parting Jordan into two. Before they got to Gilgal, they got to Bethel, they got to everywhere. And then he came back. Now he had the man too. And see what he said. He said, now I have the mantle. He said, where is the God of Elijah? I declare, as your hand touches the mantle this morning, let there be signs and wonders in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. the place of your appointment that is where you are chosen now it is your responsibility to take your calling to take your appointment into the next level 
The devil is going to try your patience. The devil is going to try your humility. The devil is going to try everything just to make sure you lose your feet. And then you lose your focus on the price. But I pray for you this morning. Every form of distractions in your life. You can be in their midst and rule over them. You don't need to run away from them. They are supposed to run away from you. The Bible said that when the calling and the appointment and, and, and everything that was said about Elijah came to pass, the Bible said the sons of the prophet, they bow. They may be your mates now. They may be speaking the same language that you are speaking. But I want to tell you this morning, when your hand eventually touched the man, today we bow. You don't need to pray that they should bow. You only need to be focused and pick the mantle. And immediately you get hold of the mantle. You start to demonstrate power. And when power is being demonstrated, principalities will bow. Therefore, I pray for you because the mantle comes before the power. Receive your mantle this morning. 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 In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. He said, where is the God of Elijah? Elijah, my father. And the God of Elijah did amazing wonders through the life of Elijah. I pray for the same God of Elijah. The same God that answered by fire. That God will answer your prayer this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you because you've answered our prayers. Father, we give you all the glory. Let your name be praised. As we go into the world, Father, let your presence go with us. Father, I ask that you teach us today. I ask that you illuminate our mind. Expand our thoughts. Let us hear from you and don't let us just hear, but let us be the doers of the world. And at the end of the day, let the glory return unto you. No one will come into this place and go back the same way. At the end of everything, we will look up to you because you would have put smiles on our faces and we reckon with you, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Mighty One in battle. Father, we thank you because you've answered our prayers. In Jesus' most wonderful name we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Let somebody shout hallelujah. That hallelujah is too... It's not enough yet. That's not for my God. Let somebody shout a thundering hallelujah. I want to welcome you to the presence of the Lord this morning. And I want to tell you that the Bible said this is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. But before I go forward this morning, I want to say if there is anyone in the sanctuary this morning that is not rejoicing in the Lord, I want you to fill your heart with joy, with gladness because the word of God cannot take a root in your life without opening your heart unto God. For everyone in the sanctuary this morning that is struggling with one spirit or the other. It could be unforgiveness. It could be malice. It could be anger. It could be anything. Those are demonic forces that walk and oppress the calling of a man. I want you to lift up your hands upon your heart and pray unto God that, Father, I have come into your presence. And I give all unto you. Let your power invade my life. And let every spirit contending with your spirit in my life. Let them die at this moment. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I want to quickly talk about the mantle this morning. I have spoken about the mantle in the first service. But I want to take it a little bit higher during this second service and talk about how the mantle is so important to what you become in life. 
how the mantle is so important to what God has said about you before you were born. How the mantle elevates, how the mantle energizes, how the mantle establishes, and how the mantle authorizes. I'm going to be talking about the calling. Then after the calling, I'll talk about the appointment. Then after the appointment, I'll quickly talk about training, and I will talk about acceptance. Then I'll talk about establishment. Then I'll talk about the authority. Because I've spoken about this in the first service, I'm going to move very fast, especially in the areas of the calling, the appointment, and then the acceptance. Then I'll take it quickly from training and then run through some other aspect of it. I want us to quickly open our Bible this morning to the book of 1 Kings chapter 19. Chapter 19, and I want us to move very fast. 1 Kings chapter 19. I read verse 15. And the Lord said to him, Go return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when thou comest, anoint Hazel to be the king over Syria. Verse 16. And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, shall thou anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Eber Mehola, shall thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. And when I was studying the Bible, there was one thing that struck me about the calling of Elijah. Church, please listen to me. The Lord said unto Elijah, anoint Eli uh, unto Elijah. He said, anoint Elijah to be a prophet in thy room, not to the nation of Israel. I struggled with that word for a long time because Elijah, Elisha eventually became a prophet unto the nations. But his calling was to the room of Elijah. Now, I want to tell you this morning, church, you need to pass the test of the room before you are released into the nations. Most of the time, God plays you in your family. Most of the time, he plays you in an assembly of brethren. And he expects that you will start the journey of your calling in their midst. And then your performance in their midst determines the next level that you go in life. Now, Elisha was called as a prophet into the room of Elijah. Now, don't forget that Elijah also ran the school of the prophets. Because he was a renowned prophet in the land of Israel. In fact, every other prophet in the land of Israel, they use Elijah as a benchmark for a prophet that God has called. So, Elisha was called into the room of Elijah only to serve in the court. But come on, how did this man eventually become the greatest prophet of his time? How did this man become a prophet that lived in one city or in one country and tells the king of that country what the king of another country is planning in his home bedroom. How is it that this same man who was called to be a prophet in the room of Elijah became a prophet that was healing the water for a whole nation? How did he become a prophet that traveled from the room of Elijah and he parted Jordan? How did he become a prophet that the kings of his time were afraid of him? And whenever he showed up, they say, Elisha, my father. Now, your calling, the establishment of your calling starts within a small group. Now, it is your responsibility, once God has proclaimed the calling upon you, it is your responsibility to take the calling to the next level. Now, a lot of people play instruments. 
But a lot of people only stop at the level of playing instruments in their local church because they never see themselves as somebody who could impart their generation by playing the same instruments all over the world. So we move from one level to another and we don't move until we pass the test of the first level. I tell you, church, every point in time, we are walking against the enemy. And the reason why we remain in the battle is because our patience needs to be tested. Our ability needs to be tested. Our character needs to be tested. Everything about us needs to be tested before God eventually takes us to the next level. The place of the calling, that was where the ministry of Elisha started. Let's go a little bit further. The, the, the same book of 1 Kings chapter 19. The Bible said, according to the word of the Lord that the Lord delivered unto Elijah. So, verse 19, the Bible says, so he departed thence and found Elisha. Whoever God has sent to you will find you this morning. Amen. See, when your destiny helper finds you, your journey is so easy in life. Have you ever seen a place where you don't want to move, but somebody is just moving you? You don't want to progress. Somebody just hold your hand. And you know the worst part of it? You won't like the person. But the person will keep on coming. You abuse him today. He will still show up today. You talk about him tomorrow, he will still show up. And he will still be saying the same thing to you. Do you know, church, that the truth is so scarce today? Many hardly face you to tell you the truth about yourself. They say it at your back. But they won't say it to you. The truth is so scarce in the house of God. And the little truth that you have, that they tell you, do you know it can confuse you? We... We struggle against the truth. Now, the Bible says you will know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So, if I come to you and I say, this is an attitude that is not good, you need to improve on this attitude. Immediately I say that, because it's the truth, you're supposed to be delivered, but you struggle with the truth. Now, Elisha, Lent under a rugged prophet. Elijah wasn't a, you know, he wasn't a prophet that was, you know, a patient prophet. And now let me give you a scenario. A prophet that entered the house of a widow. And the widow said, the last food that I have, I just want to prepare it. Eat and die because I don't know what will happen tomorrow. And Elijah said to the prophet, mm -mm, make the small for me. Is that a prophet that day. Uh, <laughs> no, he's not. He's not a gentle man. He wasn't a gentle man. If I, I would say to you that Elijah wasn't brought up with good human relationship with people. A man that just entered the palace of a king. Only God knew how he got there because the Bible never reported how he got into the palace of Ahab. And he said, there shall be no rain in this land except by my word. And he finished the word, he disappeared from there. He wasn't a nice prophet. He wasn't the best teacher of his time. But how did Elisha survive and work with this man for several years? Moved with him, does everything with him, and eventually became the greatest prophet that carried the double portion of the anointing of this man. So the Bible says he departed, verse 19. And found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with twelve yokes of oxen before him. And he with the twelve and Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. There is a difference between getting hold of the mantle and casting the mantle. You know, if you have worked with a big organization, they tell you vision casting. Then at the end of the year, they measure their performance against the vision or the goal that they have set at the beginning of the year. Now, the Bible said Elijah casted his mantle upon Elisha. 
that was a period or a process of appointment into the office of a prophet. Now, for the fact that you are called does not mean that you are appointed. That's the reason why the Bible says in Matthew chapter 22, it says many are called, but few are chosen. So, Elijah was called, Elisha was called, and Elisha was chosen. He was appointed. And the process of appointment is to make everybody know that now you have been called into the school of the prophets. Many students applied for visa to study abroad. But to the glory of God, you were appointed. Other people were declined, not because... They did not have enough money to pay their school fees. But one way or the other, because God has called you into this place, he made it happen for you. And that God will make it happen for you today in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, for the fact that you have, you have been appointed and the mantle has been casted upon you does not mean that you have the mantle. When you eventually have the mantle, that means you get hold of the mantle. Now, the period of appointment, the process of appointment is to let people know that this is what you are called to do. Now, it is your responsibility to take your appointment to the level of establishment. Now, between the, the time of establishment and, sorry, between the time of appointment and the time of establishment is a critical period. That period. That is when your ability to lead or your ability to function in your calling will be tested. A lot of people end at the point of appointment. Saul was a king over Israel. He ended at the point of appointment because his subjects never accepted him. So Saul never was, he was never established as a king. He had no authority. So it is your responsibility to work on yourself from the place of appointment into the place of establishment and authority. After your appointment, the Lord needs to prove you that you have the capability to function in the office that he has called you to be. You don't just become who you are. Sorry, you don't just become what you are called and appointed to be. You have to prove to be fit for the appointment in order to be accepted by man and by God. I will repeat that again. You don't just become what you are called and appointed to be. You have to prove to be fit for the appointment in order to be accepted by man and God. So you don't exact or assert authority upon people because you are a leader. Leaders influences their followers. The only, you know, environment where leaders control their people without exerting uh, 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 influence upon them is in the military. And even though they have the military power, it still doesn't work because your subjects need to see a level of maturity in you so that when you take a step, they will take that step with you. I want you to know this morning that when you stay in the place of appointment, you are never accepted. You never have authority. And the man who never touches your hand. Because God does not just hand over the mantle to people that are not prepared. He hand over the mantle to people that are prepared and they are ready to take their calling to the next level. 
As I'm talking this morning, I want you to start thinking in your heart that what am I called to do? When I'm talking about calling this morning, I'm not talking about your call as a prophet or your call as a pastor, even though it's part of it. But I'm talking about what God has packaged you to become in life. It's everything about you. The Bible said to Jeremiah, the Lord said to Jeremiah, that before you were formed in the belly, I knew you. And I called you as a prophet unto nations. Now God had spoken. It is left for Jeremiah to run by the word and ensure that his feet is standing strong and is able to establish his call as a prophet unto nations. I want us to look at the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 16, verse 13. And then another person, 2 Samuel chapter 2, verse 4. And 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 3. I want to talk about training now. 1 Samuel 16, 13. Can somebody read for us? 1 Samuel 16, 13. Samuel arose and went to Ramah. That was the first anointing from Samuel. First anointing. As at this time, Samuel was a shepherd boy. He was a shepherd boy. Now, the training that he had with the animals is not extremely very useful in the palace. Now, you have been in the midst of animals, very animals in the bush. And now somebody anoints you as a, prof, as, as a, as a king. Upon Israel. That was the first anointing. Now, there is a period of training that this same man needs to go through so that he can understand how to relate with people. Now, what you consider as pain today is not actually a period of pain, but God is training you because he had a greater assignment for you. Do you know why you pray so hard but that problem had not left? Because you focus so much on the problem, but you don't focus on what God actually wants you to take out of the problem. A lot of us, we pray about several things that are not necessary for us. Oh, my husband is always fighting me at home. Maybe God is telling you to keep quiet. You talk too much. Because men get angry when women are nagging. Maybe you're just getting, you know, God is telling you, just keep quiet and watch him whether he will still be talking. But your focus is on him talking too much and harassing you. I'm just citing this as an example. I'm not talking to anybody. But I want you to know that whenever we're faced with some trials and some problems in life, always focus on me that what are you bringing out of this situation? David had the ability to pray Saul out of his life. But the Bible said he kept on running. In the process of running, he wasn't just running. He was building a group of army, a group of formidable people whom he would turn to eventually when he ascended the throne that he has been appointed to be. God is training you. He was anointed three times. But he waited for seven years. Saul was anointed and he didn't go through any training because the children of Israel were angry and they said, give us a king, we need king now. So there was no opportunity for Saul to be trained. And he failed, you will not fail in your calling. Amen. See, you will not fail in your calling. Amen. You will not fail in the journey of your destiny. Please don't ignore training. It builds you up. It brings out the best in you. It forms you to be a new person. The reason why students go to school is not just to have their academic career. It's also about your human relationship. Build relationship with people. The reason why we encourage Christian courtship among young people is not because they just want you to while away time. It's because they want you to be able to learn about one another. 
And then take a decision that is this a kind of person that I could live the rest of my life with? Or also ask yourself, am I the major problem in this relationship? Is there anything about me that I need to change? A lot of us, we don't have the spirit of humility. And this is what I'm telling you. Elisha served Elijah with humility. Elisha's father was a rich man, so he had money. Elijah did not have money. He was just a rugged prophet, begging for food, sir. But Elijah was a son of a rich man. He did not look down upon his master. Even though his master did not have the amount of money that his father had, I mean Elisha, he still served under this man. And I said during the first service that God placed, it, he, he, he placed Samuel under the training of Eli. And God was speaking to a junior prophet under the training of a senior prophet. Sometimes God will open your eyes and give you the ability to see what your master cannot see. Do you still respect your master after that? Do you know it could be a test whether the mantle is to be delivered to you? Do you know? It could just be a test. Whether you deserve to hold the mantle. The grace to wait, the Lord will give unto you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now, you need to undergo drilling exercise to be fully trained and strategically fit for your calling. You need God and you need man approval. You need God. So David had a heart to be the king, but he needs to build his character. He had a heart. He could be the king. But he needs to build his character. And that is what me and you need to build. That was what Saul did not have. And that was what killed the ministry of Saul. Now, quickly, I want to go through establishment. Establishment is a period when everybody now sees you. That you have the ability to function in your calling. Now, I can come today and say, as from today, I hereby proclaim this person as an assistant pastor to me. A lot of you will probably go home and say, what the heck? How can he be an assistant pastor? I came to this church before him. I've been, you know, I've been very faithful, and nobody proclaimed me as an assistant pastor. Everybody, or at one point in a time, struggle with people's appointments. But in the place of establishment, nobody struggles. That is when you are confirmed that this is what you have been called to do. Let us look at the book of 2 Kings, chapter 2, verse 15. Let us look, let us, let, I'm, I'm going to read from verse uh, 14. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also has smitten the water, they parted hither and thither, and Elisha went over. Now look at verse 15, church. And when the sons of the prophets were to view at Jericho, saw him, they said the spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed des- themselves down to the ground before him. Now, who told them to bow? Church, who told them to bow? They saw that indeed that the anointing of Elisha, then they did not even know that it was a double portion. They just saw a little bit of the power of Elijah being demonstrated by Elisha. And the Bible said they bow. Do you know why they are not bowing for you? Because they've not seen a difference between you and them. They saw that finally, this same Elisha that we've been talking about all this year, we call him houseboy. 
We called him all sorts of names. Now, Elijah has been able to do what his father was doing. The Bible said they bow down at his feet. Because as at that point, his ministry was established. I pray for you this morning. That your ministry will be established as from this morning. Your ministry will be established as from this morning. Now, Elisha was probably at a level lower than the sons of the prophets. Because Elisha wasn't even a son of the prophet. But Elisha got the double portion that was meant for the first son. In the Jewish culture, the double portion of a man's inheritance is meant for his first son. Elisha got the double portion because he stood out. The sons of the prophet were together. It does not matter that you are standing alone. You are standing better than every other people. The Bible said all the sons of the prophet were speaking one language. And the language is this. Do you know that your master will be taken away today? The information that matters to your life, may you run with it this morning. They know, but they did nothing with it. They know. Do you know that your master will be taken away today? He said, I know, but hold your peace. I am running after something. If you are not for something, then you are for anything. And then you run when other people are running. The 50 sons of the prophet, they spoke to Elisha. And they said, now... Your eyes will come down. We've told you, you've been wasting your time with this man all these years. The same way that people speak today. Does it look like what people say to you? I prophesy over your life this morning. That the anointing you need to walk in the double portion of your father. Receive it in Jesus' name. The Bible said Elisha cried. He said, my father. There is a difference between master and father. He said, my father. He called him his father. But the sons of the prophet, they call Elijah his master. Church, this is a rhema. It's only a son that is entitled to the double portion of his father's inheritance. Not master. Father. And he got the double portion of that anointing. He demonstrated it. Jordan parted into two. And people came and they bowed. And right from that day, Elisha started walking in authority over the land of Israel and the other neighboring countries. I want you to know this morning, church, you need the mantle. You need the mantle. The mantle is the staff of your office. You can't function without it. You can't succeed in your calling without the mantle. Elisha succeeded because he got the mantle. And Elisha did not just get the mantle. He paid the price for the mantle. How many of us are ready to pay the price? How many of us are ready to serve the Lord like never before? How many of us are ready to be consistent in our calling? The Bible said in the book of 2 Kings, chapter 2, from verses 1 to 7, the Bible said Elijah got to Gilgal. He told Elisha, now it's time for you to go back. The Bible said he got to Bethel. He told him the same thing. He got to Jericho. He told him the same thing. But Elisha kept on saying one word. I will not leave. I will be with you. And finally he said, what you have asked for is too much for me to give. But nevertheless, if you see me when I will be taken away, then it shall be yours. Do you know that sometimes your master or your father in the Lord does not understand how much you are endowed and anointed? Even though Elisha was saying, if you will see me, Elisha might probably be thinking that this boy is not matured enough to see the chariot of fire. Because you need your eyes to be open spiritually before you could see that. You are on a training field. And I want you to be on your feet right now. 
I want you to be on your feet. And I want somebody to read before we leave the church this, this morning. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. Yes. First Corinthians chapter nine, verse twenty four. Those who run in a race all run. But only one win the price. Now the Bible says, run in a way that you will win. So Elisha and the, and the sons of the prophet, they were in a race. And the race is to become a great prophet in the land of Israel. But the sons of the prophet were running the race in a lackadaisical way. Instead of them to run the race, they were focusing on the race of another man, which is Elijah. Elisha. And Elisha wasn't seeing the, the sons of the prophet. He was focused on his father. And he eventually got the double portion of the anointing. I want you to pray before you leave the church this morning that the grace to be focused on heavenly things Father give unto me in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Elijah shouted, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel. And the Bible says, suddenly he disappeared, but the mantle was dropped for him. A time is coming when you will be left alone. Your spiritual father will depart from you. A time is coming when the mantle alone will be the symbol of power that you need to walk to the next level. I want you to lift up your hands again. Just lift up your hands. And I want you to say, I want you to pick the mantle. You know, I want you to pick the mantle this morning. I want you to, to, to own the mantle because it's yours. I want you to know that you have waited for too long. I want you to know that the Bible says that the neighbor has a few, but the harvest are plenty. God is waiting for you to take hold of everything that he has given unto you. He's waiting for you to pick the mantle. He said, as my father has sent me, so have I sent you. That means every power that his father has given unto him in heaven, he released everything to us. Grab your mantle this morning. Grab your mantle this morning. Grab your mantle this morning. Take your mantle this morning. And demonstrate authority over principalities, over powers, over rulers of darkness. And break and tear every door asunder and walk into your calling. Father, we thank you. Lord, we give you all the glory. Lord, we adore you. Lord, prepare me a sanctuary, son of Judah. Lord, prepare me a sanctuary.
Oh, only you. 